Take your time with it, my muse. I will be delighted to simply keep you company. I would be delighted to be in your company, sir. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvid, and today I'm going to play a game called A Date with Denial. A game from the developer of Be My Muse, where we'll have another encounter with Zacharias. You see, I take the parts that I remember and stitch them back together to make a creature that will do what I say or love me back. Richard Silken? I could smell two distinct smells. The delicious savory smell of food and the familiar scent of candles burning. I sat up straight and opened my eyes. Oh, hold on, let me just, let me just, let me just get my glasses back on. Are you all right, my darling muse? Ah! Uh. My eyes adjusted to the darkness. Oh, hello, sir. Where's that food I was smelling? You appear rather bewildered. Was the wine a tad too strong? Uh, who are you? And why do you have impeccable pecs? In the dim candlelight, I could see the man's expression shift at the question. There was a brief look of offense and sorrow before he gave me a warm smile. Why, I am Zacharias, of course. We've known each other for quite a while, my muse. In fact, we were in the middle of a dinner date before you appeared a little disoriented. Zacharias, that name did ring a bell. But as far as I know, I don't remember going on a date with someone by that name. Sure that you have not forgotten. To ensure that you're all right, do you still remember your name at least? I don't know, I got pretty drunk. But I think my name is Espoir. That's quite a relief. You do seem to be less muddled right now. Perhaps we can continue with our lovely dinner date. Uh, well, look at the food before you bite it, silly. Look at the food on the side of the table. Before me, on a large plate, was my favorite food. Warm steam wafted upwards from it. It seemed like it was freshly prepared. The smell was delicious. I could feel my stomach rumbling slightly. Beside my plate was a glass of wine, full and untouched. Look at the items on the table. The table contained two large plates, one before me and the other before Zacharias, as well as the usual accompanying cutlery. There was a bottle of wine, its label too difficult to read in the flickering candlelight, and a wine glass beside my plate. Zacharias's wine glass was in his hand. I have made sure that your absolute favorite food has been prepared for you. Please, my muse, partake in the meal. Oh, what am I wearing? Well, hold on. Hold on, sir. Let me, let me look around a little bit more. I look down at the clothes I'm wearing. I don't remember owning such expensive-looking formal wear. It was comfortable, however, fitting my form perfectly. I noted that the clothing was the same shade of white and yellow as Zacharias's suit, as far as I could tell in the dim candlelight. Ooh. There was a fresh flower pinned on the breast of my clothing. Mm hmm. Is something the matter? You're not touching your food. There is no stain on your suit, my muse. It is completely spotless and gorgeous. A fitting garment for someone as mesmerizing as you. Uh... I'm gonna look at Zacharias's side of the table. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I gazed over at the opposite side of the table where Zacharias sat. His plate, unlike mine, was empty. The glass in his hand was half full. Now and then, he did a quick flick of his wrist to swirl the contents in the glass. Take a closer look at his wine glass. I'm being very sus about this dinner date. I stared at the wine glass in his hand. The liquid seemed to be a little more viscous than the wine in my glass, and had a darker hue to it. Zacharias noticed that I was staring. He gave his wrist another flick to swirl the contents in his wine glass. The liquid seemed to thin out as he did. 
Do partake in the wine as well, my muse. Or perhaps, if a strong drink is not your dietary preference, I can request for the preparations of other drinks to your liking. Why's your plate empty, fam? Why, why, why aren't you eating? Has... has your food been served yet? Your plate is empty. Ugh. I have already finished my meal. I apologize as it must seem rather rude for me to not consume my portions alongside you. But I beseech you to not rush with your meal. Take your time with it, my muse. I will be delighted to simply keep you company. I would be delighted to be in your company, sir. <laughs> His plate is completely clean. <gasps> Objection! His plate is completely clean. Now then, shall I obtain another drink that would be more suited to your taste, my muse? My muse? Ask him why he keeps calling you that. I, uh, really appreciate you getting another drink for me, but why do you keep calling me your muse? Zacharias's eyes widen slightly. You have no recollection of it? I shook my head. He took in a deep breath and sighed, looking a little sorrowful. I am sorry, my muse. Wh why are you sorry? However, instead of answering me, he perked up suddenly and gave me a grin. Oh dear. I noticed sharp teeth poking out from between his lips. Do not fret. I will be happy to remind you of such a lovely occasion again. You see, I am an artist, desperately searching for a muse for my crafts. We met and you agreed to become an inspiration for my paintings and sculptures. Shift your focus upon that canvas. He placed his glass down and snapped his fingers. Ooh. I suddenly noticed a canvas, a small distance behind him that I didn't see before. It was dark there a second ago. It seemed like a light from the ceiling suddenly turned on just to reveal the canvas to me. Upon the canvas was a painting of me, beautiful and shockingly lifelike. I have been painting you before we began to feel rather peckish. I proposed to dine together with you, and you were delighted to accept. He picked up his glass again as he spoke, swirling the liquid within the glass. I suppose one could say that this is our first date. And I am honored, elated, to dine with a muse of such charm and beauty as yourself. <laughs> I don't remember any of that. But his deep, mellifluous voice was so soothing and convincing that I couldn't help accepting everything he said. I nodded, not knowing what else to say. Now then. Shall I procure a more suitable drink for you, dearest muse? What would you prefer? Perhaps a fragrant tea? Uh, just, just some water. Just some water might be good. Ah, of course. I shall return swiftly. Do enjoy the meal in the meantime. He stood up, pushing back his chair noiselessly, and strode off somewhere behind me, taking his wine glass with him. His movements were unnaturally graceful, like that of a dancer. Oh, we're, oh, we're looking around. We're being full sus. After he left, I finally began to take note of my surroundings. With him at the table, and especially when he spoke to me, it felt like I had tunnel vision, only able to look at and listen to him. The rest of the world around me seemed to have melted away. But now that he was gone, I could finally bring myself to look around. I seemed to be in a large, rather dark hall. I was startled and amazed to see that two of the walls was a glass wall separating the hall from a massive body of water. Ooh. The ceiling was also made of glass. I could just see what seemed to be the surface of the water through it. It looked a lot like large aquariums I used to visit as a child, but the water seemed to go on forever. Telling you right now, with my thalassophobia, I would not like any of this. It felt like I was in the middle of an ocean. There were tables similar to ours scattered throughout the hall. It appeared to be some sort of fancy restaurant. The only light in the hall came from the glass walls, as well as the candles on our table and all the tables around ours. The water beyond the glass walls casted a blue, sickly-looking light on everything. 
Uh, we're gonna stand up and look around. <laughs> I stood up, slowly moving towards one of the glass walls. As I passed by one of the tables, I noticed that it was empty, even though the candles were lit and the table was set. Hmm. All of the tables were empty. I was the only one in the hall. Hmm. I turned my attention to the water on the other side of the glass wall. The water was a greenish blue. It faded away into darkness in the distance. There seemed to be a dim light coming from the surface of the water, shining down through the ceiling. What seemed to be lotus flowers floated on the surface of the water. There were no leaves or stalks, just flowers. Hmm. There were no fish of any sort in the aquarium. I could hear a distant noise. A very soft, continuous noise. It came from the water beyond the glass walls. I went closer to the glass walls and listened closely. It was unmistakably the sound of a distant voice singing. The voice was far too distant for me to make out any words. All I could tell was that it was a deep voice. And it was an absolutely beautiful voice. I found myself standing completely still, one hand pressed on the cold glass wall, only wanting to listen to the voice. If I could, I wanted to break the glass wall to be closer to the voice, so I could hear what it was singing. But I was aware of how foolish that would be. Let's look at that canvas. After some effort, I managed to move away from the glass wall. I turned to where the canvas stood. The light that once shone down on it has been turned off, but I could still see my portrait in the faint blue glow. Hmm. Zacharias was very good at painting. I stood before the canvas, admiring the painting, but also thinking, trying to remember. I did recall agreeing to letting him use me as an inspiration for his art, but how did I meet him? I struggled to think. I think I ran into him and knocked over his stuff. <laughs> In the back of my mind, hazy and distant, I began to remember empty corridors. Empty rooms, empty halls. Miles upon miles of bizarre, empty building, full of mismatching rooms, corridors, and stairs. Seeing him in one such empty location, accepting his invitation, and then... But what came before that? How did I enter such a place? I closed my eyes, trying hard to think. The singing, while faint and distant, was making it difficult to hold any thoughts. Hmm. Four? There were four people. Four of us. I could not remember the faces of the other three. But they were a bit hazy shadows in my mind. But I remember. Backpacks, sleeping bags, candles, bottles of water. Entering an old building? Suddenly, the singing grew louder, much clearer. I opened my eyes and raised my head. I became aware that the voice was no longer coming from beyond the glass wall, but was now approaching from behind me. Ah, my muse. The singing stopped, and I could hear Zacharias' familiar voice speak to me. I turned around to see Zacharias standing behind me, in his hand was an ornate glass of water. Were you perhaps searching for me? I'm dreadfully sorry for taking so long. I... uh... He smiled, politely gesturing back towards our table. Come, dine with me. We're about to have a lovely time together. He moved over to his seat, humming cheerfully as he did. Upon hearing his humming, I found myself walking back to the table. Hmm. I wasn't even aware I was doing it. I simply walked back without thinking. I sat down, absent-mindedly gazing at him. He settled down in his seat and took a sip from his wine glass. It seemed to have reappeared in his hand. I don't recall seeing him bring it back into the hall when he returned with my drink. After you've eaten your fill, we shall continue with the painting. And after that, if you're not too tired, perhaps you could listen to my singing. 
I wish to compose a song inspired by you, my lovely muse. So perhaps you could help me. Y yeah, that sounds nice. Mm -hmm. Sacrius? Yes, love? Can I ask you some questions? Uh-oh. If it would please you, then of course, my dear muse. These clothes, there's something strange about them. What is unusual about your attire, my muse? I remember carrying a backpack before this. Uh, that was a while ago. You have changed your attire since then. But why was I carrying a backpack before this? I remember having a backpack and a sleeping bag and candles in it. Where are they? Ugh. You mentioned that I was disoriented before this. What happened? You simply fell unconscious. I was quite concerned, but unsure of what to do. I'm relieved that you woke up after that. How did... Uh, how did it happen? I believe it could be the strength of the wine. That is why I suggested to offer you a different drink with less body. Objection! Objection! My wine hasn't been touched at all. <sighs> Perhaps I was mistaken about the wine, then. Please, continue to partake in your meal. It is best to consume it while it is still warm. What is in your wine glass? It looks a bit different from the type in my glass. He gave an aside glance, swirling the drink in his glass again. It is similar, but no. It is a different type of wine, with an addition suited to my palate. I do not believe you will enjoy it. Hmm? You mentioned you finished your food before me. What did you eat? <laughs> my muse, why, why are you asking so many questions? But meat. A dish of the meat variety. A steak. Objection. Your plate is completely clean, sir. <laughs> Objection. It's a new plate. The, the waiters brought me a new plate. Objection. What waiters? Objection. His expression disturbed me. I could see his left hand trembling slightly as he tightened his grip on his wine glass. That is quite enough questions. I believe we can continue our conversation after the meal. Where are we right now? I've never seen this place before. We're in a lovely restaurant that I've booked prior to our dinner date. Okay, he can probably jimmy something up as to why there's no other customers. Like, oh, we, we reserved th the whole place, but why are we underwater? This restaurant is surrounded by an aquarium. I do enjoy being close to the ocean. That is why I desired for a restaurant that looked like this. An aquarium usually has fish in it. <laughs> fish? Got s something against the, the, the fish? Oh, yes. Aquatic life forms. I have forgotten. How, how do they look again? He seemed very thrown off by my question, glancing around frantically and muttering to himself. I... I suppose they remove the aquatic life from the tanks for a reason or another. Zacharias had completely lost his usual calm composure. We got him now! We gotta present evidence! How long have we known each other? As I mentioned, we have known each other for a while now. However, this is the first time we are dining together. No, I entered an abandoned building with three other people and met you there. <laughs> Eep! The loud noise of glass splintering made me jump. Oh. Oh. Well, also, Zeki, was, was the thing you added to your wine blood? Why are you drinking blood, Zeki? Zeki? 
Zacharias had squeezed the wine glass so tightly that it had shattered in his palm. The strange, viscous wine, mixed with dark red blood from his palm, stained his white sleeve. Oh no! He glared at me, unblinking. He did not speak. He did not move. He simply sat still, glaring, as blood and wine flowed down his arm. Zeki Poo! Zeki Poo! I slowly got out of my seat. Still, he did not move, but his eyes never left me. I began to make my way towards the doors of the hall, cautiously turning around again and again to see his reaction. Only his head moved to watch my movements. The rest of his body remained as still as a statue. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna... Bye! I pushed open the door, slowly. Oh. At that moment, I heard his chair scraping against the floor, followed by a horrible crash, as if he had thrown the chair at the table. I didn't look back. I just fled through the doors and down the corridor beyond. The corridors seemed to stretch on forever. They twisted and turned, sometimes opening up to large empty rooms, sometimes becoming so narrow that I had to squeeze myself through them. Oh, oh my, my darling, darling muse! muse. Return, Return to, to me, me, my love! love. Zacharias's voice floated down the corridor, half talking, half singing, sounding beautiful and alluring. We were we having, having such, such a lovely, lovely time. time! I kept running. Until... Oh? Oh dear! They... were my friends. The flesh had been stripped off some parts of them, their limbs torn off, seemingly by sharp fangs. My memories came flooding back in an instant. Ever since we met years ago, we loved exploring old buildings and abandoned places. We would camp out in the buildings overnight sometimes, too, so we would bring candles, some food, and sleeping bags in our backpacks. I recalled that one day, we entered a condemned building, shunned even by other groups of people who enjoyed exploring abandoned locations. It started out like any other normal exploration, until we noticed that the building seemed far larger than it looked on the inside. Miles upon miles of rooms and corridors. Some empty, some sparsely decorated with old furniture, strained statues, and framed paintings. We could not find our way out, no matter how we tried. And then, we met him. Zacharias. A strange man dressed in a spotless white suit, in the middle of an endless abandoned building. He was singing to himself, standing in the middle of one of the empty rooms. And at that moment, all four of us seemed to forget why we were there, why we were trying to find our way out. He beckoned us, and we followed him. He offered us food and drink that seemed to have appeared from nowhere. And then, he said he wanted to pick one of us to be an inspiration for his next art piece. Mm -hmm. My memory of what happened after that was hazy, but I recall being separated from my three friends sitting in an armchair, watching him paint a portrait of me, enjoying his lovely singing in between his interesting conversations with me, seeing him leave the room and hearing distant screams, but never questioning what they were. As I paused to take in the horror and disgust, I felt two arms wrapping around my waist. I slumped backwards into his warm, tall body, losing all hope. Come, my, my lovely, lovely muse. Let us Let continue, continue our dinner, our dinner date, date, shall we? we? Recapture. Ending 3. Oh no! What if I keep listening to that singing, instead of looking at the canvas over there? I wanted to pull myself away from the glass wall to get away from the singing. 
but I found that I could not. It was as if my feet were rooted to the floor, and my hand was stuck fast to the glass wall. I could only listen, and listen. I began to forget why I was standing there. My eyelids began to grow heavy. I felt my head nodding forward. Suddenly, the singing grew louder, much clearer. I opened my eyes and raised my head. I became aware that the voice was no longer coming from beyond the glass wall, but was now approaching from behind me. Oh, he still catches up to me anyway. Uh. Uh, let's see if I try... What happens if I try a different line of questions? Uh, what's wrong with my outfit? It's the same color as yours. I picked out your clothing to match mine. It felt appropriate for a dinner date, after all. That seemed to make sense. You mentioned I was disoriented before this. What happened? I don't drink at all. There's a first time for everything. You took a rather large sip before mentioning that you did not feel well and fell unconscious. <laughs> Is that so, sir? That smile says it all. I couldn't deny that. After all, I had no memory of what came before. Shall we continue with our dining? Uh, how'd you finish your meal so quickly, fam? He gave me a small, sheepish grin. I am a quick eater. You sure, you sure need so fast you're gonna get indigestion in your little tummy, and then you're gonna have to take a Tums. And drink some ginger ale. And then lay down. <laughs> I enjoyed the taste of meat and finished the dish before you started yours, and before you fell unconscious. I apologize for not waiting for you to start your meal. Now, please, enjoy your meal as I have enjoyed mine. Did you eat my friend, Zeki? Did you consume the flesh of my brethren? Uh, well, we're underwater because he likes it and apparently doesn't know what fish are. So, uh, why are there no other customers? I suppose there is a low number of clients today. It is quite an exclusive location, after all. Yeah, how did you afford to book this place? <laughs> Perhaps it is wiser to not ask your partner how wealthy they are, yes? No, you only painted one portrait of me, so we couldn't have met for long. Mm hmm? I believe that is quite enough questions. Perhaps it is time we had a different conversation. One that is less intrusive. But first, you must sleep. Sleep and forget. Sleep and let your fears vanish. Ah. He began humming. Sleep, my muse. He sang to me his voice growing gentle and soothing. Sleep and forget. I felt my eyelids growing heavy despite myself. I couldn't keep my head lifted up. Forget, and we shall do this all again. I felt my head resting on the table. Let us have a lovely date. With no suspicions of fear, my lovely muse. Ah, it restarted. I could smell two distinct smells. The delicious savory smell of food and the familiar scent of candles burning. I sat up straight and opened my eyes. Sir? Oh no! The loops! The loops! We are caught in the loops! Alright. I'm gonna eat that food. I'm gonna eat all that food. Before me, on a large white plate, was my favorite food. Warm steam wafted upwards from it. I actually don't know what my favorite food is. I'll eat just about anything. Hehehehe. <laughs> the smell was delicious. I could feel my stomach rumbling slightly. I picked up my fork and took a bite of my meal. 
It tasted incredible, exactly the way I liked it prepared. Let's keep eating. Oh no, he seems to be enjoying this. Zechariah smiled as he watched me eat. It was a warm, loving smile, but it twisted a little more than it should, showing off his surprisingly sharp teeth. I do hope you savor each bite. Do partake in the wine as well, my muse. Or perhaps, if a strong drink is not to your dietary preference, I can request for the preparations of other drinks to your liking. No, no. I'll have that drink. I would like another type of drink, if that's okay. Of course. Anything to make you happy, dearest muse. What would you prefer? Perhaps a fragrant tea? Yeah, sure. Let's have that tea. Let's have that tea. Ah, of course. I shall return swiftly. Do enjoy the meal in the meantime. He stood up, pushing back his chair noiselessly, and strode off somewhere behind me, taking his wine glass with him. Nah, let's let's be a good little a good little bean and wait for Zechariah to return. I sat still, staring at the candles on the table. In the distance, I could hear a faint, continuous noise. I listened closely and realized it was the unmistakable sound of a distant singing. It was an alluring, deep voice, too distant to hear any exact words, but still sounded almost ethereal. I listened to it silently finding my eyelids growing a little heavy as I did. It was such a beautiful song. Suddenly, the singing grew louder and much clearer. Ah, my muse. The singing stopped, and I could hear Zacharias's familiar voice speak to me. I turned around to see Zacharias standing behind me, and his hand was an ornate cup of tea. Were you perhaps searching for me? I'm dreadfully sorry for taking so long. I... uh... I wish to compose a song inspired by you, my lovely muse, so perhaps you could help me. Yeah, that sounds nice. I smiled back at him for the first time. He seemed overjoyed to see my smile. His golden eyes lit up and his toothy grin widened. Will you stay with me? My muse. I found myself nodding. Actually, me, it'd probably be more like my mouth full of food. Just, sure. Why not? Sounds cool. Any fear and any desire to remember why I was here, how I met Zacharias, and why I was unconscious at the table faded away. I was happy to simply continue an eternal dinner date with him. Denial. Ending one. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, I think that's all I can do, and <laughs> Boy, that was fun. I like Zeki. I like Zeki Poo. I really love that he kind of controls you by singing, because I would probably be lulled into a false sense of security by a deep voice singing as well. Stupid Zeki and his stupid sweet hot voice. But I would love to know what you think in the comments, so you could write a comment down there and I will read it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night. And remember, there is always hope. <laughs>